Um, okay, let me start with a good news and a bad news at the same time. Number one, are we really sitting on a disaster? I'm not sure, but yes, it is. The reality, I want to be hopeful in my response. So, IFC had projected by 2030, 230 million tech jobs is required. And that's a $600 billion in industry that is waiting to be untapped. Now, in recent times, because of the economic hardship in Nigeria, we have seen a massive churn of jackparism <laughs> out of the country. You know, I don't think we understand how bad the Japarism has really affected our economy. Let me give you context. I met a school proprietor and she was saying she wants to shut down her school. Who are the people that pay for private school? It's the middle class. Middle class are the ones that are paying for private school. And most of them are relocating. Before now, uh, before this last two years, husband will say, oh yeah, you wife, go. I'll join you later. Now, it's the entire family. And that's why the UK government raised an alarm. 33,000 students got student visa. 33,000 got de became dependent of visa, which is an Asia, one visa, maybe one dependent, maybe. Most of them don't even go with dependent. Now, back to the question you've asked. There's a data that I have, I can't remember the source now. Only one in 70 Africans have tech skills. IFC says 230 million tech jobs is required. By 2030, just shortfall of seven years from now. We had small tech talent, now it is worse. And we now have a brain drain, coupled with the fact that we don't have tech talent. And this is a big challenge, and which the government needs to start collaborating with organizations like Lento, for instance. My name is Mercy. I'm the founder, as a female founder. I'm in my 50s, for goodness sake. I'm not young. I'm not in the um, <laughs> what is it, millennial bracket. But I am committed to the development of African tech talent. And so far, we have been able to develop 2,300 in just a shortfall of three years and gotten partnership with organizations like Scrum.org to bring their professionals to train our talent so that they can have global competitive edge. Now, indeed, we're sitting on a keg <laughs> of ticking time bomb because even one bank, I don't want to mention the name of the bank, during the advent of COVID, all the workers were working from home. When they now switch a year after everybody to resume office, they are all relocated to Canada. Please picture what happens to that bank. All their talent had gone abroad. That almost scattered the banking system. One person doing the work of 10 people. Because everybody was hiding under the guys working from home. Because they didn't have to report in the office. You imagine the chunk of the talent that has up and left. And I like what um, Ayo Kuka had said on the panel conversation today, which he was talking about the agile infrastructure, the agile team. This is the future. The ideal way of doing projects or doing businesses following a project management pattern is long dead. Not because project management is not good. There are some things that you can do with project management that are just layer step by step. But the world has now moved. For you to work in a tech ecosystem or a tech organization, you need to have the agile mindset. You've got to learn the skills. Yes, engineering skill is great, but you still need to understand how agile the mindset helps you to deliver results in quick time, engaging with your customer, leveraging frameworks like Scrum, Kanban. And Kanban is just telling you we are experimenting. So for me, to your question again, without sounding like uh, a sounding ball, the truth of the matter, yes, we're sitting on the keg of taking time bomb in Africa, and it is important for us to develop talent. When you say, when you say the government should um, collaborate with the um, private sector, what exactly are you looking at? What kind of collaboration are you looking at? 
In terms of providing scholarship, I'll give you a, a typical example. This is a personal story. I met the MD of FBN Quest, and I said, wow, one of my alumni that I got another bank, Echo Bank, to sponsor 10 of them from uh, Abia, the north. It was spread across. They won the scholarship. Got to take this training that they could not have afforded to pay for. And today, the guy works with NLNG. That's a personal story. So what do I mean collaboration? If we want to develop the right talent, because the government is doing quite a lot in terms of mitigating with training. But what kind of training are you training? Can those training help our people work in LNG, NLNG, work in Amazon, work in Meta? It's beyond just learning coding. You need to understand the agile framework, the agile mindset of working, the new way of working. This is the reality. It's not going to change. Okay, yes, you are a prompt engineer, you're a web developer, you're going to work within a team. How do you blend with those teams that is not necessarily co-located in one environment, but they are distributed? There is a system, there are tools, there are digital systems that makes that work. And that's why when Ayokoka was reiterating agile infrastructure, reiterating an agile team, this is the future. And that's what Lento has been doing for the last three years. Has it been easy? Absolutely not, because I've had to bootstrap to do this to make sure it is a reality and creating that ecosystem of where our people are now getting jobs. I mean, a typical example is another of a Japarism of our student that got to the UK and was told that when she arrived, she wouldn't get a job because she doesn't have a, a, a UK experience. Guess what? In one month. She got a job at Morgan Stanley Chase. She didn't have any prior tech knowledge with regards to Agile. But today, she works with Morgan Stanley as a Scrum Master. That is only possible when you learn the right skill, own it, and know how to work within a team. I'm just wondering, is, is it really about the government um, offering scholarship or just government creating the enabling environment so that investors can come into the market, more investors can come into the market, do you say? It's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. Scholarship, enabling environment, the telco, provide, making sure internet access is not as expensive as you'd be. It's a symbiotic. We can't leave it to the government. Lento is doing our part. What is MTN going to do? What is Airtel going to do? What is Glow going to do? What is private organization going to do? Like I told you, a bank sponsored 10 people. That is a bank. They are not a government. Who are the government? It's me and you. So it will take a lot of collaborative effort for us to develop the talent that is going to build. Otherwise, we're going to have a system where we're building the tools. We're not building the people. And there's something called the holistic uh, framework in business analysis is called the puppet model. If we don't start to approach tech talent with an holistic framework, holistic mindset of saying, don't just build the IT system, build the people, build the processes, build the IT system. That way, Africa will be able to take over the world and become the solution that the world is looking for. We have the talent, we have the young people, we have the brilliance, we have... <laughs> I'm, I mean, just put any black person anywhere, we'll adapt. We are already agile by nature. But, yeah. Yes, it is again, and no, it is not. Take a look at India. Jackpa is embedded in their system from when the child has hit seven. That child goes to an Indian MIT. Why? To learn the tech skills. That child finishes and goes to Harvard, goes to Yale to develop in the Western Hemisphere, gets a job with Amazon, Microsoft, gets a job with all this multinational, works there for five years. That Indian man is going back to India to build a company. Please, do we have that kind of structure in Nigeria that if we jack back, that you're coming back? No. Look at the rate of Nigerians abroad. You will see them on social media. I they do three, four, five work, oh. I they do four work. The cold, the weather is cold. Because you're not doing the right job. I've just given you an instance of an alumni that just went to the UK in one month, got a job. 
because he learned the right skill. There are jobs overseas that if you work within those organizations, in two, three years, you'll be able to come back. Not hustling, not necessarily doing care work. Because go and check the jackparin that we are jackparin. It's now voluntary slave trade because we are going to do care work. How can a PhD older, an MBA older, a master's degrees person, you're going abroad to go and do care work? What is care work? In Nigerian palace, is house girl. Excuse my choice of word, maybe that's too harsh. In Nigerian palace, is you taking care of, you're nursing someone. Is that not what we are employed house elf for? So we need to understand that. Jackpa, but jackpa with the right skill. So that you can have a competitive edge like Chidi that went to the UK in one month and got a job. Like Tolu, another of our alumni that works with Cap Gemini today. He didn't have any tech skill, any. But he learned Agile, learned Scrum. He's in the UK there. He landed that job. He didn't go and do care work. That type of person is going to come back into Nigeria and build something that a lot of Nigerians will benefit. It's been short of amazing meeting CEOs, decision makers, and them learning from one another. And um, for me, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm able to be here and I can't take credit. I'm thankful to uh, uh, one of your team members that honored me with the invitation to be here, to meet people like you and like-minded prof professionals. Because life is all about networking. You need to know, and they say your network determines your net worth. So I've grown in my network to build or explode my network. Thank you so much.